The last part of the introduction into the Pythagorean theorem actually doesn't necessarily work directly with Pythagorean theorem, but it has to do with square roots. Now, when calculating the areas of the circles in our last unit, we learned about keeping our answers exact by leaving them in terms of pi. Similarly, square roots can be left in simplest radical form by finding the equivalent expression with the smallest possible number under the radical. Now, the radical is just kind of a fancy math word for the square root sign. So we're talking about the simplest square root form. And we know that a lot of times square roots are irrational, and so they cannot be stated as a fraction. So as soon as we take the square root of many numbers, we get a number that we have to round to some place value. So we want to try to keep our numbers exact, and learning how to simplify square roots sometimes helps us to simplify our answers while also keeping them exact. The idea with the simplified square root form, or simplest radical form, is that we want to find the largest possible square factor of the number under the radical sign. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the square root of 20 here. Think of your perfect squares. And by perfect squares, let's think of the numbers that are perfect squares. 1 is a perfect square because 1 squared is 1. 4 is a perfect square because 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. 49. 64. 81. 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, 225, and so on. Okay, those are called perfect squares because the square root of them is a whole number. So what we're saying is with the square root of 20, let's try to find the biggest perfect square that is a factor of 20. We might say, well, 1 times 20 is 20. That's true, but neither 1 nor 20 is a perfect square. 2 times 10 is 20. True, but neither 2 nor 10 is a perfect square. 4 times 5 is 20. This works because 4 is a perfect square. So the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 5. And then we can separate out the two square roots into square root of 4 and the square root of 5. And what is the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So 2 times the square root of 5 is the same thing as the square root of 20. These right here are equal to each other. If you don't believe me, check it on the calculator. The square root of 20 will come up with the same number as 2 times the square root of 5. Now, it doesn't necessarily look like it's simpler because now we have two numbers instead of one number. But the idea is now this 2 is not underneath the square root anymore, which means that if we are using it in a problem, sometimes we can actually get it to cancel out with something else, and then 5 is definitely lower than 20. So that's where it comes into play. Let's think about how this would work with the square root of 500. Well, what is the biggest one of these numbers over here on the right side that is a factor of 500? Well... 100 goes into 500, 100 goes into 500 five times. So the square root of 500 is the same thing as the square root of 100 times 5. Now we can take each of those numbers and put them under separate square roots, so the square root of 100 times the square root of 5. And now we know the square root of 100 is 10. So we no longer need the square root symbol. We can say that the square root of 500 is equivalent to 10, times the square root of 5. And again, if you don't believe me, check it on your calculator. You will find that the square root of 500 is the same as 10 times the square root of 5. Example 2 here, the square root of 32. Again, think about the biggest one of these numbers over here that goes into 32, that is a factor of 32. Hopefully you're seeing that 16 would be the number, 16 times 2. And the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. What is the square root of 16? The square root of 16 is 4. So 4 times the square root of 2 
Once we take that 4, it's no longer underneath the square root symbol, so 4 times the square root of 2 is the same thing as the square root of 32. Square root of 24. Which one of these numbers is the biggest perfect square that goes into 24? 4 happens to be the one that would work. Again, 24 has many factors, but the only factor that is a perfect square is 4. Well, of course, 1 is, but that doesn't really help us at all because the square root of 1 is still just 1, so it doesn't simplify anything for us. But that turns out the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. The square root of 4 is 2. So 2 times the square root of 6 is simplified square root form. Uh, square root of 80. Now, this one, you, you could maybe think about what's the biggest perfect square. Now, 4 happens to go into 80, but the biggest perfect square that goes into 80 is actually 16. But let's say you didn't remember that 16 was the biggest perfect square. So you could say, okay, well, I know 4 goes in there. 4 goes in there 20 times. So this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 20. So that's 2 times the square root of 20. But then notice that 20 still has a perfect square that's a factor of it, because 4 still goes into 20. So we're not done with the square root of 20 yet. We would have to say, okay, that's the same thing as 4 times 5. So that's 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, which is 2 times 2 times the square root of 5, because the square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 times 2 is 4 square root of 5. So we eventually get there to 4 square root of 5, but wouldn't it have been faster if we said that, all right, the biggest perfect square of 80 is actually 16. 16 times 5 is 80. So... The square root of 16 times the square root of 5 is 4 square root of 5. Notice how much faster we got to that using the biggest perfect square that is a factor. But you should still be able to get there even if you start with a smaller perfect square if that happens to be possible in your problem. So 4 square root of 5. A couple other examples here. Well, this one turns out real easy because the square root of 81 is 9, so 9 times the square root of 2. That's it. Uh, this one here, you've got two of them that both have coefficients in front of the square root symbol, so we just multiply our coefficients in front first, so that 2 times 3 is 6, and then we can multiply our numbers underneath the square root. 2 times 12 is 24. So 6 times the square root of 24. Now let's take a look at what's the biggest perfect square that is a factor of 24. Well, 4 goes into 24 six times. So 4 is that perfect square that we're interested in getting out of there. And the square root of 4 is 2. So 6 times 2 times the square root of 6. And 6 times 2 is 12. So 12 times the square root of 6 would be the simplified square root form of this multiplication up here. All right, so let's do one example down here where we are using simplified square root form. And so this one is a situation where you have a ladder leaning up against a house. So here's our ladder that makes a little right triangle with the house, and it says that there is a 20-foot ladder, which means that the length of the ladder is 20 feet. And then the foot of the ladder is placed 5 feet from the wall. So the bottom of the ladder is 5 feet from the wall over here. And we want to know how high up on the wall is that, so let's call that A. So we've got A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So you've got a squared plus 5 squared is equal to 20 squared, because 20 is the hypotenuse, so you have to put that into the C spot over here. a squared plus 25 is equal to 400. Doing a little bit of algebra here, we subtract 25 from both sides, and we get a squared is equal to 375. So A is then going to be the square root of 375. Put it in simplified square root form. 
Mr. Swiggum says. So here we go. Square root of 375 then in simplified radical form. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 375? Well, for sure 25 does. So I'm actually going to start there and see if that gets us to our answer. 25 times 15 is 375. So that's the square root of 25 times the square root of 15. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 times the square root of 15. Now, 15, let's take a look at that. Does 15 have any factors that are perfect squares? In other words, does 4 go into 15 evenly? Does 9 go into 15 evenly? No, I mean, 3 times 5 is 15, but neither one of those are perfect squares. So this is actually our final answer in simplified square root form. As a decimal, take 5 times the square root of 15, and you get approximately 19.4 feet. So that would be our answer in simplified square root form, and as a decimal, rounded to the tenths place.